Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at a couple of examples of rational inequalities, and we're going to try to find the intervals over which they are satisfied. Um, we're going to do this example, and then we're going to do at least one more example um, to help get us oriented. Now, I, one thing I will say is that um, problems that have less than or equal to signs or greater than or equal to signs are going to be a little bit more complicated than the um, strictly less than or greater than because um, we when we have an equals to sign, we have to worry about whether our zero is gonna come from the numerator or the denominator. When you have strictly less than, you don't care about anything being equal to zero. And so you don't have to worry about where the zero for your change of sign comes from. You only have to worry about that it's not included because it's a less than or a greater than. But when there's a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to, then we actually have to worry about, did this come from the denominator or did it come from the numerator? Because you can't have zero in the denominator, but you can get a zero out of the numerator. And so whether those endpoints get included or not is gonna matter. So the example that I'm gonna do here is going to include the less than or equal to sign just so that we have that as our example. But again, it's easier if it's not there because you don't have to worry about it, uh, where the zero came from. All right, so first thing we have to do is we have to factor. So in the top, I can pull out an X. And then I can factor a little bit further. Um, let's see, in my denominator, I'm gonna pull out an X minus, no, x minus 2, x plus 1. And in my numerator, I'm going to get an x plus 1 squared. Now, it may be tempting to try to cancel the x plus ones here um, because you would think there's two of them in the numerator, there's one of them in the denominator. Um, I don't really have to worry about it, but you're actually gonna change your answer. Again, because of the less than or equal to sign, uh, if you cancel it, it's gonna look like that negative one can be included in your solution. Um, but it's actually a zero in the denominator, and so it can't be included in your solution. So from this point, what I'm going to do again is I'm going to draw a number line. And what are my zeros? So I have a zero at zero. I have one at negative one. I also, there's that one's repeated. And I have this one at uh, positive two. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that what I'm gonna do when I have these uh, inequalities, these zeros in my denominator, is I am going to mark them as coming from my denominator. Because when I write my solutions, things that are not from the denominator, I can include because of the equals to in my interval and things that are from the denominator, I can never include in my interval. All right, so now what does this give me? So I'm gonna check for um, the signs for each of my things. So I'm gonna pick something out here, less than negative one and try and figure out what the sign of that result is. So because that's gonna tell me whether it satisfies as less than or equal to zero or not. So let's say negative two. So that would give me a negative for that X. And then this is squared, so that's gonna give me a positive. And then if I put a negative and another negative, that's a negative. And a negative plus one is gonna give me a negative. So that's an odd number of signs altogether. So that's gonna give me a negative in this section. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but now negative one half, so something in between here. 
So negative, this is going to be positive. Negative one half minus two, that's still negative. Negative one half plus one, that's still positive. So that's going to be positive in here. Someplace between zero and two. So let's say one, that's going to give me a positive. That one's still positive. This one, one minus two, going to be negative. One plus one, that's positive. I have an odd number of negatives, so that's negative. And then someplace out here, I'm going to pick a three, let's say, positive for x. The square is always positive. Three minus two is still positive. Three plus one is positive, all positive. So this is a positive. So I'm looking for less than or equal to. So that means that I want this interval right here and this interval right here. So my leftmost interval is going to be negative infinity to negative one. Can I include it? No, I can't because there was a x plus one in the denominator. Negative one will make the denominator zero. Therefore, the whole expression will be undefined. Therefore, I can't use it. And then when I pick up on this interval, this zero came from the numerator. It can be equal. And so I would have to use a square bracket zero to two. Two is from the denominator, no square bracket. Now, again, the difference between this solution uh, with the equal sign is this. And this solution without the equal sign, this is this square bracket. Um, if it's if there's no equals to, these are all round, and it won't make any difference whether they're from the numerator or the denominator. But the fact that this zero comes from the numerator is what means with this equal sign that I have to put a square bracket on it. But I still can't put square brackets on anything out of the denominator. All right, let's try one more. Now, sometimes you're going to have to do a little bit of algebra before you can actually solve your problem. And again, I'm going to do the uh, greater than or equal to version just because that is a little bit more complex. Now, the thing about a problem like this is that our rules about sign changing and things like that do not apply if one side of the equation is not equal to zero. So the strategy for dealing with a problem like this is to put everything on one side of the equation, write it as a single expression similar to what we had in the previous example, and then follow all those same steps. So we're going to move the x plus 5 over to the other side of the equation, 2x. 2x plus 17 over x plus 1 minus x plus 5. I'm just going to keep it in parentheses for now. Greater than or equal to 0. OK, so now I need to find a common denominator. So 2x plus 17 over x plus 1. That one already has a denominator, but x plus 5 doesn't have a denominator, so I'm going to use the common denominator I have already from the other one to make that have a denominator as well. And so now we're going to rewrite everything as one expression with a common denominator. And then we have to do some algebra. Uh, so let's see. 2x plus 17 minus x squared plus 6x plus 5.
and then 2x plus 17 minus x squared minus 6x minus 5 all over x plus 1. And so negative x squared minus 6x plus 2x is going to be minus 4x. And then 17 minus 5 is going to be plus 12. And I'm going to pull the minus sign out. Now, if I wanted to, I could multiply everything by that negative, and then I could lose it and flip this sign. But I'm going to keep it in there for now. Um, I'm going to factor my numerator uh, x plus 6, x minus 2. That 6 and 2 will get me my 12. And then adding 6x and minus 2x will get me my plus 4. And so my zeros are going to be negative 6 and 2 and negative 1. So we can draw my number line. Uh, we've got negative 6. And we've got positive 2. And we've got somewhere in between there, negative 1. All right, so again, we have to do our test points to find out where they're greater than or negative. Now, if we include keep the negative here and we don't flip our inequality, it has to go in with our sign analysis. So everything starts out with a minus sign from this minus. Now, if I pick a number that is less than negative six, let's say negative seven, then this is also going to be a minus. And negative 7 minus 2 is also going to be a minus. And my denominator is also going to be a minus. So that's four minuses. That gives me a plus. Now, I'm going to mark my negative 1 as coming from my denominator. Because that's going to matter eventually. All right, so my minus from my outside minus. Now I pick a number between negative six and negative one. Let's say negative two. That's going to be a positive. Negative two and negative two, that's going to be a minus. In the denominator, negative two and one, that's still going to be a minus. I have an odd number of minuses, so that's a minus. Now, again, my minus sign from out front. Now I'm going to plug in, let's say, zero, since that's between negative one and two. That's going to give me a positive. Zero minus two is going to give me a negative. In my denominator, I'm going to get zero plus one, which is a positive. Even numbers of negatives, that's a positive. And then finally, if I plug in, um, OK, my negative is going to be out there anyway. If I plug in something bigger than two, like say three, that'll be a positive. That'll be a positive. The denominator will be a positive. Odd number of negatives, that's negative. Now I want, since I didn't take out the negative sign and flip everything, I want where this all, whole thing is gonna be positive. So what I want is, this interval over here, and I want this interval right here. So what is going to be my interval? It's going to be from negative infinity to negative 6. Negative 6 is coming from the numerator. It can be 0 union 
Now I'm going to start at negative one, but negative one is coming from my denominator, so it can't be zero. And then I'm going to go up to two. Two is coming from my numerator. That can be zero. And so I can put the square bracket on it. Again, if I had just strictly greater than zero, then this answer would be exactly the same, except I would have no square brackets. And so I wouldn't have to care whether the zero came from the numerator or the denominator. Now, I will just as an aside, say that there is a relationship between rational inequalities and polynomial inequalities. So consider uh, negative x plus 6, x minus 2, x plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. So this is a polynomial where everything is in the numerator. The solution to this inequality is exactly the same as the other one, except nothing is in the denominator. So my solution would be uh, negative infinity comma negative six union negative negative one to two. So this endpoint from the denominator is the only place where this solution differs. So sometimes you may find, particularly when you're doing something graphically and you have a problem that is quite complicated, maybe similar to our previous example, um, what you can do is you can actually just put everything in the numerator, graph them uh, as a polynomial, get your endpoints that way, and then write out your inequality and then simply remember at the end uh again if it's less than or equal to, if it's less than or greater than with no equal sign the solutions will actually be literally identical um but if you um have something in your uh if you have an equal sign and the, the endpoints in your denominators will need to come out and so even if you find your solution from the polynomial, you simply have to modify it to remove those um, zeros that were originally not in the numerator, but were in the denominator. So sometimes that can be an easier way to, to do these problems um, graphically, rather because rational functions look crazy, especially if there are a lot of factors in the denominator. They jump around all over the place. Polynomials are much easier, much more simply behaved. And so you don't have to deal with those infinities. You only have to deal with things going to zero. And so if you're trying to do them graphically, um, that can be an, a, a simpler approach uh, from a visual perspective. And then you just have to remember to take that last step and take out those endpoints that were originally from the denominator.